guests there. Okay, o open season. It's open. It's a, it's a, have, have a field day. I'm going to give you a few little while here to kind of fire shots at the banking community. You don't like what's going on and what you're seeing around. It's a lemming house. mentality. I mean, you know, I don't know what it is in them, but the bankers are all like lemmings. They just follow each other off the cliff. I mean, I think we need to look at the fundamentals of the economic situation right now. China is booming because, or it's not booming, it has high growth because of massive stimulus mm -hmm. packages. The stimulus package is being driven into infrastructure investments, most of which are actually redundant. Uh, it's actually creating a, it's, it's most of the funding is fueled into an elite because, of course, uh, the infrastructure investments kick back to construction companies, developers who are then linked to government. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're doing is we're not going to see the emergence that quickly of a consumer class in a broader scale. You have consumption in the key cities that the investment bankers fly to, but in the heart of the countryside, you still have a very big you know, difference between increasing gaps between rich and poor. Mm. And of course, this is greatly uh, you know, driven by the fact that China has these massive foreign exchange reserves, most of which are UN, U.S. Treasuries, which are in fact supporting America's debt and America's stimulus package, mm -hmm. which is being used to bail out banks and give heavy bonuses to investment banks. So mm -hmm. really, I kind of wonder, you know, how can two systems be so different, but in some ways so similar? <laughs> I, was, um, uh, I was speaking to uh, a strategist at CLSA uh, last week at the CLSA forum where Sarah Palin was brought in to share her China expertise with everybody. But uh, what the same as her Russian expertise? <laughs> Roughly the same, he yeah. He's bringing up my schoolmate. I don't know, like, <laughs> like he's trying to rub it in or something. But our speech went down reasonably well, but the strategist was saying, remember 2008, it's going to be the year of the century century, the year that the 40% of the population in the world who live in the emerging markets realize they can't get rich selling to the 14% in the West because they've been buying their goods on debt. Do you think that's the case, though? Do you think 2008 goes down in history as that year? It's, it's a watershed because it's also the year that the titans of Wall Street, you know, uh, are not titans anymore. And we have to wake up because what we've been doing is we've been living in a situation where we're, you know, stimulus packages are going toward consumption. The problem, the solution is not consumption. The problem is overconsumption. We have a planet with diminishing resources. We have a planet that through globalization has become a global village. And you cannot have a situation where you have a small population supporting themselves, having massive consumption at mm -hmm. the expense of the rest of the world. We praise, you know, uh, the effects of globalization. But over the past few years now, what do we have? 40% of the world population is in poverty. One sixth of the world's population is in extreme poverty. These are not the seeds of sustainable economics, seeds of revolution. It, uh, in, in fact, the very revolutionary talk there, because this doctrine would dictate that what was going on, asset wealth destruction, was a good thing because it brings you back to a sort of a new normal or something, rather than trying to get people to get out there and buy stuff, buy all kinds of junk and consumer crap that you don't need once in. We're going to continue this chat. You can see it's getting more incendiary. We're just getting warmed up here. AC continues. 60 years on, we focus on the people in the People's Republic. New findings.